uh, on uh, how do you fight depression without medication? Is God real? How do you know? What is romantic love? Is it real or self-delusion? But no one's called on this one. Oh, I got one. What is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life that you now regret that you, that you wish you could undo? You know, I can't even answer that myself. I, I wrote that down just before the show because I wasn't going to do the, um, the, the politics thing, which I did at the beginning. I don't really know what I did that I wouldn't do again. I guess how, how can you measure which thing you did wrong that was the worst thing you ever did? Do you, can you figure that out? I like people, you know, I used to hear this when I was younger. Oh, I have no regrets. What do you have no regrets? What kind of idiot would say that? I just said it. I'm, I'm asking the, you the question, though, the audience. I can't even think of a regret, but I met people when I was like younger. It used to be a big thing. With guys that say, well, I've lived a long life and I've made many mistakes, but I have no regrets. What do you mean you have no regrets? Why not? What, everything you did, you're glad you didn't, you, you would do it all over again? You must have done something that you wish you didn't do. Something. I'll be right back. Think about it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It's a crazy day at the Savage Nation. I have eschewed politics for the moment, intermittently, you know, the race I could care less about right now. But the thing is... You know, lifestyle is my middle name. Lifestyle questions are wonderful, and I think they're interesting and entertaining. And I, I think people want to get it off their chests a little bit. I wouldn't say every day. And uh, we're doing lifestyle. How do you fight depression? Is God real? What is romantic love? What is the biggest mistake you've ever made that you regret? KSFO, John, biggest mistake you ever made. Go ahead, please. Michael, thank you for taking my call. The biggest mistake I've ever made was smoking marijuana when I was 17, and I had probably spent 20 years of wasting my life away. And if that was anything I could change, that would be it. I think that's the most important call of the day. I, too, would say to anyone listening that marijuana was the biggest mistake ever made in my life. A guy named Howie Mambo turned me on to a joint in the Catskill Mountains when I was 17. And my life forever changed, and I wouldn't say for the better. It did open me up to certain views and viewpoints. But I look back, I'm, I'm editing my journals right now from 66 to 69. I could see page after page of garbage, depression, sadness, stupid poetry. Goes on and on. Every time I smoked a joint, I, I wrote idiocy. It was only when I got rid of marijuana when I was very young that I was able to focus and put my brain to good use. And, of course, you know that this society is pushing children into medication, especially marijuana, in order to uh, control them. You agree with that, don't you? I do agree, Michael. I see that. We're out of time. Biggest mistake in the world, marijuana. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. That was a tough course. Trigonometry was harder than geometry, but uh, here we are. Uh, we're talking about odd stuff today. I did three minutes of politics and 57 minutes of uh, lifestyle in the last hour. Read uh, my headlines which is we talked about how do you fight depression without medication is god real how do you know what is romantic love is it real or self-delusion or what is the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life that you regret that you wish you could undo now i mean i could do carrie i could do putin i could do you know planned parenthood should we fund it or unfund it i'll leave that to those who do that best i don't do it best i mean you want to talk about it talk about it with someone else Maybe another day I'll get back into politics, Syria, this and then. Uh, who cares right now? I'd rather do lifestyle. We live in a free country with free ideas. And truthfully, as long as we're not at war in this country, most of us don't even think about what's going on, truthfully, in the, uh, in the rest of the world. I've done it Monday, and I did it every day last week. I want a break from it. I'd rather talk about lifestyle, and I know you would too. So we're talking about various things, love and this, and is it real or a delusion? I don't know. You know, things come back. 
Because usually, for an older guy, the last time they were really in love was in high school or something along those lines. Or, you know, that, that's about it. it. was when they were young, very young. Who remembers love from that period of time? And I remember looking back, now that I think about it, we were all told by older men, like men who would talk to us about this stuff, like fathers. Guys, listen to me. If you want to know what your girlfriend's going to look like, if you're thinking of marrying or look at her mother, as a result of that, half the guys I knew became gay. No, I mean, it's really true. It's a fact of reality. So you don't really know what to do. I mean, everyone changes. What do you think you look like compared to what you looked like when you were 18? What do you think? You're a bargain? Have you looked in the mirror recently? <laughs> recently? You guys are like, oh, look, look what happened to that one. Look what happened to that one. What about you? Have you looked in the mirror recently and see what you look like? <laughs> Time and gravity is no friend to the human uh, body. That's all I can tell you. So there's a way through it all, I suppose. And my answer is a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And uh, there's got to be a little bit of humor, and you're not going to get through life. I can tell you that right now. Otherwise, you wind up looking like Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama. you got to be able to laugh at yourself, too. And you know Barry can't do that. You know that Hillary can't do that. I mean, that's one of the reasons they're hated. You look at Obama, and you know that this man is so in love with himself, he, never, he could never hate himself. He could never say, did I do something wrong? And that's one of the reasons he's despised. You look at Hillary, and you know there's a woman who's a maniac, who could never, ever doubt herself. Never. And that's why they're so dangerous. People who, who never, ever question themselves, let alone doubt themselves, can be very dangerous for themselves and the world. And it goes back to what I was saying last night. I was watching the history of World War I for two straight hours, and you see these crazy generals, French generals, British generals, who drove their men into the German machine guns day in and day out, knowing that the, most of them would die, and the men wouldn't go, and they shot... 500 of their own men were shot in the back, executed because they wouldn't climb the ladder to, to their instant death. And they would, no matter what they were told by the men or by lower command in the command structure, they would send the boys over the ladders into German machine guns and they would all die. It's unbelievable to me. Why? Because of the ego, the, the unchecked ego of the generals, for example. Now, we have something opposite to that in our country. We have no generals left uh, who would ever tell their men to do anything. They're all, how shall I put it, most of the generals who are left in this military under the psychotic running the country and the military, uh, a goodly percentage of them, most of them, it's hard to even know anymore, are incapable of leading men into battle. They don't even know what a battle is. They don't know, they don't know who the enemy is. They have no idea who the enemy is. How could they lead men into battle? So let's go back to the questions. And I think one of the questions that I find most interesting is what is the biggest mistake you, the listener, may have made in your life that you now regret that you wish you could undo. In the last hour, a man called and said smoking marijuana at age 17 made him waste 20 years of his life, and I concurred with him. And it made me think that was the biggest mistake in my life. I thought I was a, a great, insightful genius when I was smoking pot. Well, you're not a genius, usually a deluded fool. What you're going to do is look at your own writing or your own painting, and you'll see how bad marijuana is for you. WMAL, Richard, welcome to the Savage Nation. I got to hit the right number here. Let me, uh, let me put on the old, uh, uh, yeah, okay, line number eight. Uh, Richard, WMAL, what's the biggest mistake you ever made? 1987. Well, first of all, hello. 1987. Hello, yeah, yeah, right. Let's be, I'm make believe I'm a, no, a normal American. Hello, how are you? Glad you called. You're wonderful. I'm the greatest. I'm glad you listened to me for 400 years. Thank God for calling. And how are you? And what do you hear from a, a, your mother? And I'm glad you called and you're a regular. And uh, thank God you know I'm a genius. What's on your mind? Okay, 1987. I'm 19 years old. I'm in the Air Force. Um, I work on the flight line on fighter aircraft. And, uh, I bought this car off the used car lot, and it was a nightmare. And I never stole anything, and, you know, I was raised in a strict family, and without going into too, many, too much detail, uh, this car drove me nuts. And you know what a T-top is? It's yes. Like on, on yes, a, I remember them. They were, they were pretty ugly. Yeah, well, this car, the, the roof flew off in the intersection. Now, I tried high and low to buy one. And what? So your biggest mistake is buying a T-top or what? The T-top, because it flew off and I... Oh, wait, sir, we got to speed it up. Your biggest mistake in life was buying a bad car? Well, let me get... I'm almost to the end of the... the mistake. I know, but I'm ready. I'm, I'm having a migraine already on the right side of my head clamping because we got to speed it up. Tell us the problem. Biggest mistake. Air Force. 
I All right. Thanks for the call. I don't know. Now already the topic, the show is going to go in another direction. This keeps up one more call like that. And I'm going to do regular politics. I may not recover from another call. I got a migraine on the right side of my head. That could be the bad Chinese food I ate for lunch. Uh, it could be the sauce. It, I don't know. But the, what was a tea top? That's the worst thing the guy ever did in his life was buy a tea top. Okay. Let's go to Josephine. Maybe a woman can save the show. Josephine, KKOB Radio, welcome to the program. Biggest mistake you ever made in your life or what? What's your topic? Oh, hi, Michael. My topic is, is God real? And, I, and he is real. And what happened was in March of 2002, I was widowed, and I was uh, very young. And my husband was an EMT, and he was shot in the head. And um, Whoa, whoa, whoa. He was shot while tending to a, a, a patient? Yes, sir. One of the animals he was. One of the animals that was treating shot him. Yes, sir. He was oh. he responded to a call. This um, bipolar man. He uh, lit his girlfriend's house on fire because he you know. Yeah, right, it's the same with the police. They go to bipolar people, and the cop gets in a shootout, and the cop gets killed. Then they blame the cop for going there. Well, my husband was a was an EMT, sir, and so. No, I heard um, that. So tell me how you know God is real. After your husband was shot, what happened? Okay, a mo uh, you know, the first month, of course, you know, you go through that depression, right? You're in shock, and your whole world is upside down. So about a month later, I woke up on a Saturday morning, just a regular Saturday morning. I, I, went, I walked into the living room. I turned on the TV, and I said, oh, no, I can't do this. You know, I can't go back to life as what it used to be. So I turned off the television, I got on my knees, and I prayed, and I, and I, and I prayed to God, and he, while I was in prayer, Michael, okay, he gave me a vision, okay? I was wide awake on my knees, and I saw the glory of God, okay, that white, white light. Then I saw my spirit, my soul, okay, and then... Two angels came, one on my left and one on my right. And the angels, they have this, the same shape, and, and they look like humans, but they're spirits. And they had hair and eyes and ears, everything. But they had a little uh, cloth around their waist. All right, wait, so I'm, I'm not knocking it, and I'm not mocking you. The truth is I've heard from people who believe in this. What about those of us who've tried to pray and have, nothing came back? Michael, I don't know how God works and how he answers people, but I'm telling you the truth. And if I'm I've been in synagogues, I've been in churches, I've asked God to talk to me, I can't find him. Michael, God is real. And listen, so after that happened, okay? No, I, I hear you, but I'm saying most people pray and nothing happens. They go through the motions, they don't want to ever go back. Kids try it in churches, it's like mumbo jumbo to them. Jews go into synagogues every day, they do everything right and there's no God. Or they go home and the gas gets turned on and kills five children over a holiday. They're not supposed to touch the gas. And they say it's God's will. I don't know. I, I Sometimes I can't, I can't believe this stuff. Hey, let me tell you something else real quick, Michael. I bought a picture of a church at a thrift store. Okay. Okay. Listen, I'm, no, no, I hear you're a true believer and I respect that and I thank you for calling. But most Americans have had trouble finding God, which is why the churches have emptied out, which is why the Pope came here on a sales trip. He had to bring in people from the South who uh, will fill the pews. Uh, they don't have any trouble, apparently. They go through the rituals, and they know God, is, it, it, God exists, so he needs them in there, not the non-believer. That's all. Next case, move on. I tend to think I think I've run through this topic already because I, I feel my energy failing me. It's fa fading, fading. It's fading on me. I feel it like going. And if I'm already getting bored of these topics, you are. So now I have to go to all the sound I have in the news. What a mess. What a mess. Look at this story I just found during the break. I read during the... She started telling about angels. My eyes went to this story. J.P. Morgan financing Los Angeles mansion starting at $115 million. <laughs> now, you'd say God exists for these people, for sure, because there's no other explanation for this kind of wealth. A development team that includes real estate investment arm J.P. Morgan is offering the ultra-wealthy a rare opportunity to build mansions bigger than the White House on a hillside overlooking Los Angeles, starting price $115 mil. Junius, Junius Real Estate acquired an 11-acre site near the Hotel Bel Air a year ago, preparing for three estates. First lot will go on the market Tuesday. 
There's a shortage of trophy properties that are available for sale in the pocket of Los, this pocket of Los Angeles. 